Hey there, it's Kate Swoboda, also known as Kate Courageous. I'm the creator of YourCourageousLife.com, the director of the Courageous Living Coach Certification at TeamCLCC.com, and I'm the author of the book, The Courage Habit, which is available at booksellers everywhere and of course at Amazon. And as you might have guessed, I'm the host of this podcast, the Your Courageous Life podcast. We're going to talk about going after what you want and living a more courageous, emotionally resilient life. I might drop a couple of F-bombs, so don't listen with your kids in the backseat. And here we go. So if you've done a little self-help, maybe a little personal growth, a little looking at your issues, as many of us do, at some point you might have decided that anybody who is difficult in your life is someone that you have an opportunity to learn from. Ever heard that one before? Maybe you've decided that instead of, um, you know, the, the saying about resentment is like holding a hot coal in your hand and hoping that the other person will burn, you know, um, that, that forgiveness is necessary. Forgiveness is the gift you give yourself. Learning how to deal with difficult people or the people we consider to be difficult is an opportunity for us to look at our own shadow selves. And maybe you, like me, have uh, really doubled down on some of your work with those people in life, the people where it feels like, gosh, this is like oil and water. You can shake us up a little bit and we might mesh for a minute, but if I am not like perfectly on my game, we separate and it just doesn't seem to be working. But all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to go back to doing my work. I'm going to keep the focus on myself. I'm going to use I statements. I'm going to focus on the things I appreciate about them. And then, yeah. (laughs) Anybody laughing with me here? So I wrote a little piece on, uh, on personal responsibility and those times when you realize, oh, all this work I've been doing to try to make sure that I was on point with my own work to not contribute to scar tissue in this relationship with this person, uh, maybe some of this actually just isn't mine. Like maybe there's just no self help in my way out of crazy, right? And I wrote a little piece on that, and it seemed like a lot of you resonated with that, particularly on Instagram. People were tagging one another and saying, got to listen to this and all that good stuff. And so I thought, this should definitely be a podcast episode then, because clearly I'm not the only one out there who has gone, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flex my muscles of compassion, and I'm going to do all the things, and I'm going to use the tools, and I'm going to show up differently in this relationship with this person, and then, ay, just, yeah. And there's some real freedom in realizing, oh, like, this might not actually be mine. <laughs> this might be one of those times where, like, they're just, there's nothing to do here, necessarily. So... Let's talk about that. This is a little blog post that I'm turning into a podcast post on personal responsibility and the holy yes of this is not mine. A while ago, I was seeing some craziness unfold in real time. Someone had sent me what is officially the nastiest email I've ever been sent. It was an email loaded with the clear intention of cruelty and unkindness, so much so that within only a paragraph, I was clear that I didn't want to read the rest of it. And to this day, I never have. That day I connected to something that had been hinting of its own existence for some time. The voice of, this is not mine. You might be like I was, earnest and committed, willing to own the mistakes I've made and do the work. And then crazy shit happens in your life, and you start with the questions. How can I take radical responsibility for that? Or how did I manifest that? Or what are the choices that I should be making differently? Now, these are great questions to ask. The path from victimhood to self-efficacy is paved on those questions. But then there's this question which I hope will land with a kerthunk in your soul. 
what if that crazy shit that happens isn't yours? Again, questions that ask you to assess your own responsibility and to account for your own poor choices are excellent questions to ask. I wish more of the world asked them instead of trying to lay fault for things at someone else's feet. Also, I'm willing to say that a majority of the time, the crazy stuff of life probably is yours. Or perhaps I'll speak for myself. The majority of the time when my life isn't working, it is straight up, no question, without a doubt, me. But we're all bouncing around in the universe together here. It is inevitable that you will inadvertently suck someone's chaotic tailwind without even realizing it. There's a lot going on in the cosmos that can't be explained, and, dare I say it, there's even a certain amount of narcissism in assuming that each of us as individuals is some kind of epicenter of the manifestation of the universe. In other words, maybe sometimes we try to make the crazy shit that happens about us as individuals, because then we feel like we have a little corner of control. Sometimes hustling to take personal responsibility isn't so very responsible. Sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is accurately identify when someone else's brand of crazy has nothing to do with you. And the bottom line, do all the self-help you want, but understand that you are not going to self-help yourself out of dealing with people who are nuts. There is no amount of goodness that you could ever be to save someone else from their own wounds. Now, that doesn't mean write them off or forego compassion or stop doing your personal work. Please do live in the light. Please do heal your stuff and take personal responsibility for your own integrity. Just be conscious of those times when you're simply bumping up against someone else's stuff and taking it on, and it's just not yours. Try whispering it three times. This isn't mine. This isn't mine. This isn't mine. Your body will tell you the truth. If you're trying to run away from taking responsibility, chances are you'll feel that low-grade, kind of guilty, maybe I'm trying to squirm out of something kind of a feeling. But if you notice that you feel relief and that the words feel like an arrow aimed true, then you know it isn't yours, it never was, and it's not your responsibility to fix. You do you. And here's hoping that that lit you up a little bit, got you thinking about those times in life where maybe you're assuming that it's you and you're doing the very important work of taking self-responsibility, but unfortunately, this isn't on you. Sometimes it isn't. And as I said in the audio, I'm always a champion for us looking at our stuff and taking personal responsibility. But to truly take responsibility, You gotta only take responsibility for the pieces that are really yours. You can't take responsibility for anybody else's stuff. That's a wrap for today's podcast. Looking forward to having you around the next time. And as always, you can connect with me on social media at Your Courageous Life on Facebook and Kate Courageous on Instagram.